session for Monday, February 3. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late, everybody. Um, we'll start with uh, Resolution RS 2020-164, Mendez Roberts approves a contract between Metro Government and Civic Engineering and Information Technologies to provide software maintenance consisting of enterprise land management, e-permits, electronic plans review, queue management, contractor licensing management, geographic information systems, CityWorks PLL software, and related customizations and interfaces. Is there a motion? And um, so it's been moved and seconded. This is a sole source. There were materials we got from ITS about that. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, I do appreciate uh, ITS uh, providing the information about the sole source. I think the reason there's no questions is because we got the information. So I appreciate that. Um, oh, we got one question. Council Member Um yeah, just, a, just a clarification. When I look at the uh, contract, there is a clause in there for escalation and de-escalation. And my question is, at that time when those adjustments is made, is there a possibility that the contract would end up being more than $3 million? Because it says it's an estimated value. So are we, is there a way to cap it? Or what does that? Just want some clarification with regards We've, to that. Um, got Miss Lane. Oh, there we go. Um, Council lady, typically uh, we have escalation clauses as standard clauses in our contract. Um, and usually it's more applicable um, for those uh, contracts that we have solicited in which we allow the contractors to provide as part of their offer what their escalation would be from year to year. On a contract such as this, we would potentially negotiate um, the escalation, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, IT, but I believe the value that we have is reflective of what we intend to pay over the life of the contract. So is it, does it help to, to put up to $3 million or we just know that it would not be more than $3 million? I was just... You know, the estimated value language that's in those contracts really provides the city with some flexibility in the event that there are some items that we need related, you know, to the service within the scope. We're not locked in by a hard contract value. Um, we do not extend estimated value contracts beyond a 20% amount without a hard amendment, which would need to go, of course, to the mayor's office for review. Thanks very much, Ms. Lane. Any other questions? All right, this one's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-178, Mendez, Hager, and others, approves a Racial Equity and Arts Leadership Projects Grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to the Metro Arts Commission to break down structural and institutional barriers to equity and increase diversity through education, leadership development, and targeted programs within the Nashville-based arts nonprofits. Sir? It's been moved and seconded. Nobody in the queue. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-179, Mendez, Hager, and others approves a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to provide funds to purchase computers for use by library patrons and staffs, staff and to enhance the use of technology services available at the public library. Move. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-180, Mendez Hurt and others, approves a sub-recipient grant agreement between the Metro Development and Housing Agency and the Metro Department of Health of, of Social Services Homeless Impact Division for one-time payments of first month's rent and security utility deposits on behalf of homeless persons obtaining housing through various campaigns. Move, properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-181, Mendez approves the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for automotive parts and accessories. Move. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, uh, Councilman Glover. I, I, 
Thank you, Chair. I, I debated. This really doesn't have a question to this. Uh, however, it does have a question to general services uh, with regards to fixing the automobiles, the various pieces of equipment we have at some point down the road, and that's what triggered me on, on bringing this up right now. I would like for us to be able to have a conversation with them to discuss the efficiencies there and are there ways as we begin the budget process prior to us getting all the way into the budget to be able to chat with them and, and understand you know, why these kind of things are helpful or perhaps a hindrance uh, with regards to consolidation of all the equipment and, and kind of what I read in the uh, analysis on this, analysis on this was the uh, buying of the parts, consolidated, et cetera, and that's what prompted it. So wait, no question, just asking us to do that, please. All right, and I'm going to impose upon Mr. Cooper here uh, whether he's got ideas about how we might gather information about that before the budget process starts. I'm told that Hunter from General Services is here. She might, I mean, they might can provide some, I mean, that's kind of a, a broader policy question about who maintains what. Sure. Um, I guess we've got somebody from General Services. Hi, I'm Velvet Hunter uh, with General Services. We'd be happy to try to answer some questions today or set up a time to get together um, or uh, provide you with information following this meeting. Stacy Wall is the fleet manager. Um, so if you have questions, we'll try to answer them or get it get you the information you need. Why, why don't we do this? Um, what I, I'd like, uh, um, if Mr. Cooper could follow up with Councilman Glover to um, see if there's specific questions. Um, I know everybody's time is valuable and if you guys can answer them in writing, that would be great and be shared with the committee. And if anybody else has um, questions about this, uh, please let Mr. Cooper know and we'll see if we can get some information developed before the budget process. Does that work, Councilman yeah. Glover? Yeah, sorry, I hit the, uh, um, that's fine. I just think to, to try and understand because it's obviously a big piece of the, of the pie in the uh, overall operation of all of the uh, city government. Uh, that's why I'm asking specifically. And, and again, I realize this resolution didn't have anything to do with that, but I've been just kind of looking for a, a uh, opening to uh, make the suggestion. So, I mean, we certainly can try the questions uh, I just wonder if we can really understand uh, in a couple of paragraphs the magnitude of what we've done over the past several years uh, on consolidation of the fleet into just one area. Well, let, let's Thank try you. it by writing first and see how it goes. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. If it doesn't work, I would ask us because I do believe this is important. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we voted, no, we did not vote. Did not vote okay, yet. and this is on 181? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, resolution RS-2020-181 has been properly moved and seconded. Nobody else in the queue, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS-2020-182, Mendez Pulley and others, approves an in-kind grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to Metro Nashville Fire Department for three multi-gas monitors to detect flammable gases, toxic gases, and oxygen depletion. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-183, Mendez Pulley Welsh, approves an in-kind grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Metro Nashville Fire Department for advanced hazmat life support courses to medically manage patients exposed to hazardous materials. Moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-184, Mendez Hurt Welsh, um, approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide breast and cervical cancer screening and diagnostic services to eligible individuals. Moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. And seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-185, Mendez Hurt Welsh, approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to facilitate the planning, implementation, and evaluation of community-driven and evidence-based health promotion programs. Is there a motion? 
Uh, second, anyone? Um, and Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just wondering if someone can give us some uh, explanation or examples of what those programs might be. We've got Mr. Sharp walking up to the podium. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, I'm Tom Sharp from the Health Department. Uh, breastfeeding education, promotion and awareness. Um, we have an expectant parent resource packet that we give to pregnant women to help them ma manage resources after they have the child or before even. Um, we have a program called Gold Sneaker. They go into child care centers to try to make sure that the snacks and so forth that they feed are healthful. Um, we have a vending program that tries to nudge people towards more healthy vending options. Uh, we have an internal uh, uh, employee wellness program that we uh, fund with that. Um, the Health and All Policies group um, has been uh, sort of co-opted into some of that. Um, we, among other things, we're, in, we're piling in an equity tool for grants and other uses. Um, the Healthy National Leadership Council is, is uh, staffed under that money. Uh, and the implementation of the Community Health Improvement Plan, which, as you know, is a fairly uh, substantial document. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. All right, this is on uh, Resolution 2020-185. It's been properly moved and seconded. Nobody else in the queue? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-187, Mendez Hurt and others, approves a grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations for fine particulate matter in Nashville, Tennessee. Is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-188, Mendez Hurt and others, approves the Bob and Diane Hoover Annual Innovation Award Grant from Pet Health Services USA, Inc. to the Metro Board of Health to acknowledge animal life-saving initiatives for the betterment of animal welfare through the development of at or application of technology. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-189, Welsh Mendez Henderson approves an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for intersection improvements on Nolensville Pike from McNally Drive to Natchez Drive. Moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-190, Sledge, Mendez, and others, approves an intergovernmental agreement between Tennessee Department of Transportation and Metro Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at Nolensville Pike. Moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. RS 2020-199, Mendez Henderson and others, approves an amendment to an agreement between the United States Department of the Army and the Department of Water and Sewage Services for the Mill Creek Flood Risk Management Project. Is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded. There's a couple people. Um, Council Member Suara. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a clarification. I see that uh, we are required to pay a minimum of 35% up to 50, but when I look at the number, are we just budgeting or proposing the 50% for the uh, structural flood and 35% for the non-structural? Or do we know we're actually going to pay 50%? Mr. Palco. We've got Mr. Palco. Go ahead. Tom Palco. Tom Palco, Metro Water Services. Yeah. The, the agreement, this, this agreement was signed originally in 2017, and there's two parts to it. There's a structural component, which is some bridge modifications at Briley Parkway, and then there's some non-structural, which is the home buyout. The home buyout portion is 65% federal, 35% metro. The construction project is 50-50, and that's what we've budgeted for. So, all right. So I'm reading it to say that we have a minimum of 35. I wasn't sure whether... It's something that is negotiated where we, could, where we could actually pay 35 for the construction. Or you're saying that it's always 50? Yes, for the, for the structural components, it's, it's always a 50-50 split. But the non-structural, which is the home buyout, is 65-35. Okay, all right, sir. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Glover. Just a housekeeping. Uh, if you could re-identify it, I think you said 199 and it's 191, unless I'm mistaken. Um, usually Mr. Cooper gets me if I'm wrong about that, but this is resolution 2020-191. Thank you. 191 has been properly moved and seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. Resolution 2020-192, sponsor Mendez, authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Vanderbilt University against Metro government in the amount of $100,000. It's been properly moved and seconded. Councilman Glover. If, if I could, let me get, I, I read the analysis. I think I know exactly how we reached the conclusion here, but um, I guess the, the more important thing, how did it occur? And uh, obviously, I guess Vanderbilt's out about 80,000 uh, on this, if I, if I remember the numbers I read correctly. Um, and so um, what are we doing to try to make sure that doesn't happen again? Mr. Honeysucker's here. Thank you. Good afternoon, John Honeysucker, Metro Water. Councilman, what happened, there was a call to dispatch, there was a water line break. So anytime there's a water line break, we have to have it marked uh, by a company, uh, USIC. Uh, they, they did mark the lines. Our crews went out. Based off the markings, there was no other line there. Our crews did the, their usual task of making sure that they completed the task of, of replacing the line, backfilling it and assessing it, making sure that everything was done properly in a timely fashion. And when our team leaders left, they made sure that everything was done properly. After that, they left. Okay, Chair, then I guess that leads to the next question. Does the company who didn't mark it correctly, are they open for any liability in that arena? Not sure who we got. I mean, are they? Tom Cross with Metro Legal. Our contract with the uh, utility marking service does require them to indemnify us. It is not crystal clear in this case that they made a mistake. The markings are just unclear. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Chair. Wait, and, and just to close that loop, Mr. Cross, just for the viewing public. So it sounds like the position is because it's not 100% clear what happened. This is a negotiated settlement. All right, thank you. Um, all right, we're on uh, resolution 2020-192. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend approval. Moving on to bills on second reading. Bill 2020-148, Benedict, Welsh, and others amends the Metro Code pertaining to contracts with private operators of detention facilities. And um, I will call on the sponsor first. Thank you, Chair. So um, there has been a joint committee meeting announced for February 13th, so that's a week from this Thursday for this uh, committee, as well as the Public Safety Committee. So I would like to move deferral one meeting uh, and then we will tackle this conversation in that joint committee meeting. All right, so there's been a motion to defer second reading for one meeting, um, and it's been properly seconded. And uh, as Council Member Benedict mentioned, next Thursday, um, February 13th, um, at four o'clock in the chamber, there's gonna be a joint committee meeting between budget and finance and public safety, specifically on this bill to discuss. So um, seeing no further discussion on the motion to defer second reading um, till our next meeting, um, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, we recommend the one meeting deferral. Next is BL 2020-153, uh, Murphy is the sponsor, establishes a new fee structure for sidewalk waivers. And I guess we've got a letter from the sponsor to asking to defer it for one meeting till February 18th. 
All right, so there's been a motion to defer one meeting. It's been properly seconded. Um, seeing notice, Council Member Bennett, are, are you seeking to be recognized on this one? My, okay, my board is still. Sorry. That's all right. Um, all right, so it's been, uh, there's been a motion to defer one meeting. It's been seconded, no further discussion. Um, uh, is shown on the board. All in favor of the deferral, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, we recommend the one meeting deferral. Um, BL 2020-154, O'Connell, Mendez, and others approves an amendment to a lease agreement between the Department of Public Works and OP 611 Commerce Property LLC relating to parking spaces in Metro Government's parking facility located at 151 6th Avenue North. Is there a motion? Let's see, um, start with uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I would uh, love to have some data on how many, so my understanding is this will make another 50 spaces available um, if needed and they'll sort of reserve it for 10% of the, of the regular price. So two questions, one, um, are there 50 spaces that are sitting there unused or will this cause a deficit for, for public parking? And then number two, that $190 a year, I mean, if you assume six to eight parking for every day, that's like a dollar an hour, which I, I'm paying more than that at the, um, at the library parking. So I would, I would like someone to explain how that, how that math has worked out as the general price. It's Ooh. 190 per month. Correct. But if yeah. you look at the number of hours in a month, that still works out to about a dollar an hour. So is there some standard assumption of how many that's hours it's the, That's the standard rate for the garage. Um, so it's the same mo monthly rate that, that anyone else pays. Any office that's renting any, it by them. Anyone that's, that's using spaces there. But if I go in and pay, I believe it's more than, I mean, there's they're 720 hours in a month and more than 190 of them are available for parking. So that, that math doesn't work out to what it costs per hour to park there. So I'm just interested in how the monthly rate compares with the hourly rate. I've got Ms. Wallstrom here. Maybe she Great. can answer the question. Thank you. Council Member Allen, the, the daily rate is set at a higher rate because there's no guarantee that they're going to park there day after day. The monthly rate is set at a discounted rate because you have the guaranteed income for the month. And so the other question then was, are, are those 50 spaces sitting consistently sitting vacant now or are we getting, are we getting parking there at the hourly rate? Um, there are times whenever they are consistently sitting vacant during special events or uh, big events at the library, there may be times whenever they are not sitting vacant and we could have picked the hourly rate, but as a whole, the parking garage does have the availability to go ahead and offer those. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you very much. Council Member Glover. So if I can, let me make sure I understand the 10% piece of it. Um, and I don't know who that needs to answer that, but if you would help me understand the way the math works on this exactly, if it's used or if it's, so basically they're reserving uh, with the 10%, um, but if they don't use it, I mean, is the 190 paid regardless? So if they choose to exercise the ability to, to use all 50 spaces, for the ones that they are using, they pay the full 190. If they don't use it, they pay 10% of the monthly charge. Okay, then I'm gonna piggyback on what Council Lady Allen just asked. Uh, if they choose not to use it, then what flexibility do we have for when we do have a very big event downtown that would generate uh, revenues from those parking spaces they're paying $19 a month for versus 190. I think they would they would pay that amount, but we would have the ability to use those spaces for those events. Ms. Wallstrom. My understanding is they, they have 50 spaces that they can buy for the monthly rate. They will get cards that can be activated. If they only activate 10 of those cards, they're paying the 190 a month. The rest of those cards, they're paying only the 10% for. So they would not be able to use those 40 spaces if they didn't have those whole 40 spaces with cards that have been activated. The activated cards will cost them 190 a month, but they will be paying 10% every month for the opportunity to activate those cards later on. Okay, so uh, let me just make sure I understand this correctly. 
so they're paying, let's just say they only use, and I'm going to do math a little bit differently, but they only use uh, 10. That leaves 40 available. So, so roughly, you know, what, uh, um, 800 or well, a little under $800, they've got to pay regardless if they use that or not. But if they don't pay that by the first of the month or activate those cards by the first of the month, it opens up those 40 spaces. Can they change their mind throughout the course of the month and ask for a uh, reduced rate for that particular month? They can. They have the option to activate whenever they choose. All right, so I'm just going to ask this final question. Thank you for indulging me, Chair. Um, if all of a sudden they decide they're going to activate it during CMA week, um, what does that do to, to us with regards to downtown parking for the city? So, Ms. Wallstrom, the question is basically, are they prevented from strategically activating and deactivating the spaces? That I will have to go back and look at. So I will take that question back and try to get an answer before tomorrow night. Okay. Well, I mean, I would like to know the answer. I mean, I'll go ahead and support it right now. But if we don't have the answer by tomorrow, I would ask this to defer until they do get us the answer. I just think that's kind of important. We're obviously entering a very busy tourist time in the city, and I think it would be relevant to understand uh, how that works as far as first right of refusal. I mean, I get first right of refusal. It's just, can they just turn it on? And then all of a sudden they've got people coming in from out of town that they really didn't utilize it. So I'm, I'm just asking what if questions on that. Ms. Wallstrom, is there any time urgency on this one? Uh, we've, we've been working and negotiating on this quite a while, so I will try to have the answer back before tomorrow night. It sounds like a no, except we've been talking about it a while. I, I'm going to have to go back and defer to legal and see what kind of uh, information has been put in the contract and if there's any deadlines on it. So uh, thank you. Um, I mean, I, honestly, uh, we, we've got more people in the queue, but um, just f from my perspective, I'd, I'd rather um, have it go the other way and have us recommend deferral. And if the information comes back positively by tomorrow, then it can go forward tomorrow. Well, I'm, I'm believe me, I'm happy to recommend a deferral. I just was wasn't really sure where we were and uh, given the opportunity. But I mean, I, I doubt two weeks is going to make make or break it. So Let, let's go through the rest of the queue and then. All right. All right. Councilmember Benedict. Thank you, Chair. So I guess my questions are around. One, this is a renewal of an existing lease, and these are the terms, and although, no, that's incorrect. It's a, an expansion of an existing lease. Right, right, right. The additional spaces, right. But the rates themselves are an, an extension of what we're currently paying. Is that correct? Sorry, receiving. Correct. Okay. How does that, do we have any information about how that compares in the past to, you know, um, has this updated over time, that rate? The rate is adjusted um, every year to <laughs> match the current monthly rate. That's what I thought I read. Okay, perfect. And then do we have any information about how this compares to um, any competitive information? So I would think that would, um, I mean, are we, are we doing fine with this or is there concern that we'd be losing money through something like a CMA week? I mean, maybe it was Ms. Wallstrom has that. I, I mean, my sense of what it costs to get a parking monthly parking spot downtown is that, like, it costs a couple hundred bucks a month. Um, uh, and the, the rates are set to market. I mean, they do a, a market analysis when they set the rates. And um, so I don't know, Ms. Wallstrom, do you have any information about the market rate that this is pegged to market? It, it is. The parking rate was changed a month or so ago, maybe two months ago, in the Traffic and Parking Commission. So it has just been recently raised, and it is within, depending on whose garage you're looking at, a dollar to five dollars of what the market is. All right. And um, any other questions? I would just comment that this seems like a, a good extension, in my opinion. Like, you know, we're picking up additional parking. So, uh, that we're giving additional parking spaces that we don't have guaranteed income on today, and we're going to have some guaranteed, guaranteed income. So at a time that the city's looking to find additional revenue, this seems like a good option. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Before I seek a, a motion, um, Ms. Ms. Wallstrom, I, I think uh, going back to Councilman Glover's question, I think something that would answer the question discreetly is if, if there is a prohibition against um, OP611 commerce property reselling the spaces, um, and that they would have to be for office building users. Um, there is a prohibition yeah. against them reselling. They're or not using allowed that for any kind of profit of their own. Yes, that's in the contract. All right. Does that it? Uh, count, council member? I had confirmed that with Mr. Cooper originally. That was a big concern as well. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Council member Glover? Well, that leads to the next question then. I mean, what safeguards do we have? I mean, uh, that uh, that they're not allowed to resell it. I mean, are we going to have somebody going by there and checking it and making sure that the card that comes through has the tag uh, associated with it? Uh, I, sorry to sound cynical, but, you know, there, we're just coming up on a very busy time in the city where parking will be a premium, and I don't think anybody would uh, doubt me or argue uh, against the fact that we charge a premium out there for parking, or we don't, but... A premium is charged for parking, and I'm just trying to make sure the city is being protected uh, in the overall agreement here. All right. Well, I guess we could put it to Mr. Cooper illegal about what else. I don't know if we can take a blood test at the well, gate. I, I don't know that we could either, but just to say know. that we're not going to do it, oh, okay. You know, but, so, uh, no, I, so I, with that, I will renew, renew to, to defer one meeting, please. And just to make sure I heard it right, but I'm, I'm hearing that there's a prohibition in the contract already against profiting off the spaces? That's, yes, and they, they can't sublet it. The only, the only way they can sublet is if someone buys the building or if it's an affiliate of the company. Thank you. Councilmember Benedict? Thank you. So uh, the way I understand the bill, it's from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. correctly. So in the evenings, those spaces could be used by others at a higher rate? Okay, That's thank you. And I think um, Lee would like to be recognized, Tara. Go ahead. Hi, Tara Ladd, Metro Legal. I, I was just looking over the contract before I commented to make sure that I was correct, but we did include a provision that says they have to give 30 days notice before they increase or decrease those spaces. So you, so I, I was pretty sure that was in there um, because I understand your concerns, and that was one thing that we insisted was there for that particular reason. So that is there. They can't, on the spot, request an increase or a decrease. So, uh, Mr. Glover, you want to stick with the motion to defer? No, I'll, I'll retract the motion. I still would like to have the rest of the answer by tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then I think we have a pending motion. I'm sorry. There's also an amendment here. Yeah, Somebody want to move the amendment? I'll move. Mr. Yeah. Cooper, can you tell us what the amendment does? The amendment just adds the layout of where the spaces are going to be that was inadvertently left off when it was filed that's in the amendments packet all right any questions about the amendment the amendment's been moved and seconded uh seeing no further discussion all in favor of the amendment say aye, aye. any opposed all right somebody want to move the, bill as amended. the bill's been moved as amended um seeing nobody in the queue for discussion all in favor say aye, aye. any opposed all right, we recommend approval as amended. <clears throat> uh, third reading, um, bear with me a second. All right, we've got uh, BL 2019-3, th Syracuse, Murphy, and others amends the Metro Code authorizing Metro government to come under the provisions of Tennessee Code annotated and establishing a historic property review board empowered to abate property taxes relating to certain improvements or restorations made to historic properties. And I, I see um, the note in, in my thing says there's a letter to approve. I guess I haven't seen that yet. I think oh. that's when Syracuse intends to defer. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, call on uh, Councilman Syracuse. Uh, I do have a, a letter here from, from Murphy. She, she probably wanted a letter for all of her 
bills okay. that she's listed on. All right, go ahead, Mr. Circus. <laughs> Thank you. I, I didn't submit a letter, so I don't know where that came from. And, and, I, and I did have um, Mr. Cooper let my co-sponsors know what I'm about to do, and that is I unfortunately have to move for an indefinite deferral with a brief ex explanation. Well, uh, okay, um, go ahead. So as I explained last time that we were here, we were waiting on the second phase of the place economics study, which is the consultant that Metro Historic hired to uh, give the economic impact of historic preservation. Um, unfortunately, that report, it did come back, but it only came back last week. And it didn't have everything that Metro Historic was looking for. So there's not enough time to do a full fiscal impact of what this uh, program would do for us. And it is fair, especially in this, this budget time that we're in, to ensure that it does have a solid uh, fiscal impact note to it. So with that, um, I'm going to just hit pause on this for now. All the work that's been done is not lost. And we'll get through this uh, tough budget season we're about to enter. And once that is done, I will bring it back and uh, will hopefully, between now and then, have all the time in the world in order to get a solid fiscal impact on, on this. So I renew my motion to thank indefinitely you. defer. And thanks for all your work on this. I know we appreciate it. Um, all right, there's been a motion to defer indefinitely. It's been properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all in favor of deferring indefinitely, say aye. Any opposed? All right, we recommend indefinite deferral. BL 2019-49, Syracuse O'Connell and others, approves a property tax exemption for historic properties owned by charitable institutions in accordance with Tennessee code annotated. Is there a motion? He wants to defer this one. Um, and well. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. Well, second verse, same as the first. I'm going to move to and definitely defer this as well. This uh, requires that um, historic property review board, so if it's not created, this one doesn't really have any any impact. So anyways, I, I do want to run these together, so I'm going to move for an indefinite deferral and bring them both back at the same time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, the motion for indefinite deferral has been properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend indefinite deferral. And that's... Uh, a wrap, that's everything on the agenda. Thank you, everybody. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.